Welcome to Unit 5 of U.S. History, titled The Early Republic, which takes place during the late 18th century and into the mid-19th century. So in this unit, we will delve into the early republic period in United States history, spanning from 1789 to 1840. This crucial era witnessed the formation of a young nation, its struggles, triumphs, and the establishment of key institutions that continue to shape the United States today. So we begin in 1789 when George Washington became the first president of the United States. The new nation faced numerous challenges, including a fledgling economy, regional divisions, and foreign threats. One of the earliest issues was the creation of a stable federal government, the ratification of the Constitution in 1787, and the Bill of Rights in 1791 provided the framework for this government. We will then move on to the Jeffersonian era, Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson's presidency from 1801 to 1809 marked a shift in American politics. The Louisiana Purchase in 1803 doubled the size of the United States and set the stage for westward expansion. However, this expansion raised questions about the spread of slavery and the rights of indigenous peoples. Moving on, we will discuss the War of 1802 and the quote-unquote era of good feelings. The War of 1812 fought against Great Britain was a pivotal moment in U.S. history. Although it ended in a stalemate, it bolstered American nationalism and led to a period known as the Era of Good Feelings. During James Monroe's presidency from 1817 to 1825, the United States enjoyed a relatively uh, tranquil domestic uh, environment, but grappled with sectional tensions over issues like slavery and tariffs or taxes. Then we will move on to discuss the market revolution. The early 19th century saw the emergence of the market revolution characterized by rapid industrialization and urbanization. Innovations like the cotton gin and the development of canals and railroads revolutionized transportation and commerce, laying the groundwork for a more interconnected nation. As we go further into the unit, we will discuss the Jacksonian democracy as it's known. So Andrew Jackson uh, was president and his presidency marked the rise of what we call Jacksonian democracy, characterized by increased suffrage for white men and a more populist approach to politics. However, Jackson's policies also led to the forced removal of indigenous peoples, most notably, most notably the Trail of Tears. The abolitionist, abolitionist movement and the growth of slavery in the 1830s. So by the 1830s, the issue of slavery had become increasingly contentious. The abolitionist movement gained momentum with figures like William Lloyd Garrison and Frederick Douglass, who advocated for the immediate end of slavery. Simultaneously, the South became more reliant on slave labor, deepening the divide between North and South. The election of 1840 and the conclusion of the unit. So as we approach 1840, the United States was at a crossroads. The election of William Henry Harrison in 1840 marked the beginning of a new era in American politics. It was an era of change, growth, and tension. The early Republic period laid the foundation for the nation's future as it grappled with issues of democracy, slavery, and expansion. So in conclusion, the early Republic was a time of transformation and challenges for the United States. It witnessed the birth of a nation, territorial expansion, the spread of democracy, and the growing divide over slavery. These foundational years continue to shape the course of American history and serve as a reminder of the complex and enduring legacy of this era. So I want to thank you if you've uh, been with me throughout this video, previewing the unit. 
Uh, I look forward to working with all of you during class. So in this unit, we will, of course, have a unit project. It will be a research-based project. And uh, we will have a debate, eventually, discussing things like uh, Jacksonian democracy, for instance. So we want to discuss, we want to try to understand, for instance, how the market revolution and the rise of capitalism affected the American economy and American politics. So we know capitalism to be a system that is based on a free market. Okay. We need to understand how the government intervened, how social programs began to rise. And we want to understand the U.S.'s foreign relations. So as we know today, the U.S. is one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful country in the world. And we have an insight into its complex web of international relations. However, as the early republic was being built, we we're going to see how the U.S. started off with a somewhat weak type of foreign relations. The U.S. did not have a footprint yet in global politics. We will discuss the War of 1812 a little specifically. Uh, we will talk about how the tension with Great Britain began, how it climaxed and how it ended. So uh, that, of course, took place during James Monroe's presidency. And in the project, we will start talking, we will start having arguments for and against uh, both sides. We will try to understand, let's say, Alexander Hamilton's plans for the economies, for the economy and the opposition to it. So Alexander Hamilton, the first treasurer of the United States, the first secretary of treasury, he had his own plans to enrich and, uh, and grow the economy. However, he faced some opposition. We will try to integrate that with some economics. For those of you who are, who are enrolled in economics, uh, we will discuss a little bit. We will integrate the unit with um, geography. For those of you who are currently taking geography, uh, your knowledge in that course will be of great help for you during the project. So I look forward to working with you all and see you soon.